Hello and welcome back, this time to an yet another uh, serial bus system. Yeah? This bus system is called One Wire Bus. Yeah? One wire, how is this working? Is there really just one wire? Yeah? No. no, there's not just one wire. I show you a typical one wire thing. Here, this one, yeah. they went three wires. Yeah. But this must not be. This is a temperature sensor. It's a temperature sensor, uh, one wire technology. Unfortunately, we do not have any one wire element in our Arduino. Yeah. However, I want to show you the one wire uh, things because mm, they are pretty nice. They are pretty nice. How is this one wire working? And why is it called one wire? Huh? Well, it's called one wire because it has only two wires. That's clear, right? Yeah. The, big, the big benefit of this is that uh, the one wire uh, elements, they usually, if they are small enough, yeah, the sensors and so on, which are connected to the one wire, yeah, they do not need to get a supply, power supply. How is this working? Huh? There are two lines, I show you. Huh? There are two lines with one wire. Huh? This is the so-called data line and the ground line. Always. Always two lines. There are always two lines. This is the data line. This is called DQ here. And this is the ground line, G and D. Huh? The data line, this is charged by a pull-up resistor yeah, for reasonable size. Here they are rather small, 2 kilo, something like this, to a power supply. Yeah. So if no one on the bus is talking, I have here the power supply ready. Okay, And there are, there are the slaves. Can be different slaves. Yeah? And there is a master. It's one master, different slave. In this communication, in this bus communication. The master is controlling the bus. Okay. The ground is connected simply to all of them. Yeah? And Every station, yeah, every slave station has a built-in uh, capacitor. Okay, so this capacitor here is charged. Built-in capacitor and the logic. This is inside and they are connected then to the data line. Yeah? So once nobody is talking, the data line is char charged to this uh, supply voltage and the capacitors are charged too. And if there is some, some data transfer, this will get go to zero for a certain amount of time. And the power supply from, from this, for the slave is done by these C's here, by this built-in C's. Yeah? The power supply of the slave can even be up to... 900, 900 milliseconds, uh, microseconds, 960 microseconds, that's in the specific, 960 microseconds. This is how long this capacitor should last or has to last, last for power supply. Okay. This is how this is working. So since there is only one data line, there's no clock line. Yeah, there's only one data line, so the transfer is asynchronous. Yeah. So there is not now transfer, now transfer, now transfer. There is just, uh, well, some at some point in time it's transferring. This point is always synchronized when the master is pulling this to zero, to low. Okay? 
yeah, different voltage level, usually is 5 volt. Some one wire elements do only uh, allow 3.6 volt. You have to refer to the data sheet, please refer because you're destroying it. Yeah? Up to 6 volt, some are tolerate up to 6 volt, 5 volt is quite usual, and some only tolerate 3.8 or something like this. Yeah? You have to look. So it's one master and up to 100 slaves usually. Yeah. And they, they need power, yeah. so they consuming power from the data line, so they're also consuming power from this uh, uh, pull-up resistor. So it is also usual to have active pull-up resistors. If they need power, they will, they will lower their value. Uh, uh, if we have passive pull-up resistors, we can cover here up to, to 150 meters. 150 meters is already pretty much. Uh, if we are uh, have active pull-up resistors, we can even you we can even be up to 300 meters cable length. That's already quite good. Yeah. So it's asynchronous uh, and because we only have one data line we can only allow the master to talk or one slave to talk but not both at the same time so it's half duplex. Yeah. Not full duplex it's half duplex. So asynchronous serial bidirectional yeah, half duplex bidirectional Two lines, ground and DQ. DQ is also there for power supplying the slaves. If the slaves need more uh, power, then an additional power supply line. This is what is, is here. Yeah? There's an additional power supply line because this voltage, this sensor here, this needs a little bit more power. Okay, and like say asynchronous, whenever the master is pulling this to zero, then the timing starts. Yeah? And if the master, for instance, wants to write a one, yeah, it will pull the DQ line, a one, write one. Yeah? The DQ line will be pulled to zero for one, uh, for one to uh, 10 microseconds. This will be pulled down. Yeah? If we want to write a zero, yeah. Then we're pulling this down from, from 60, 60 to uh, 120 microseconds. Yeah. And this is how it is done. Basically, it's a little bit like Morse code. Yeah. Short, 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 short is a 1, long is a 0. Yeah. And so we can transfer, and the transfer rate is usually 16.7, 16 16.3, uh, 16 sorry, 16.3 kilobit per second. Yeah. There's an overdrive mode, uh, overdrive mode, then this timing is shorter simply. Yeah. This timing is shorter and then we can go up to 142 kilobit. Also not too low. Yeah. So this one wire bus, this is overdrive. Yeah. Seems to be good. And I said 100 slaves, 100 slaves. How are they identified? Yeah. They do have uh, they do have an uh, address, yeah? a so-called ROM ID, yeah? ROM ID, 64-bit, 64-bit ROM ID. Yeah? And eight of these bits are family, family ID, yeah? then there are 48 bits, zero number, And then we are at 56. What are the missing 8 bits? The missing 8 bits are a checksum. Yeah. CRC checksum. Yeah. To see if this is correct. This is how we address a slave. Yeah. If the master wants to talk to a slave and asks what so on, the communication, it will send this address. Yeah. And the address, they are flashed in, actually. So this sensor has a certain address. This sensor, which is the same type, model, 
uh, manufacturer and all has a different uh, and every every sensor will have a different address uh, that's it will we run out of addresses for sensors well it's two it's 48 bit right for one family yeah it's 48 bit yeah two raised by the power of 48 how much is this i don't know i have to grab my calculator of course yeah? because this is a little bit beyond my mag magnet my mathematic skills two raised by the power of 48 yeah? uh, 2.81 a million billion trillion eight twenty twenty eight trillion ah, it's enough huh? I don't know how many atoms are the universe but it should be enough for sensors yeah? every sensor its own address yeah? that's one wire bus yeah? one wire bus quite usual quite usual also you see there are benefits for it yeah for serial communication and for for interfaces and so on that's it yeah in this course i'm not going to tell more about those things yeah? if you want to dig in deeper dig in deeper like always then it's getting really interesting yeah? for now this is enough for us yeah? for me is nothing left to say then thank you very much for listening next course will be uh, identification systems, IT systems. We are talking about barcodes and 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 RFID and so on. Yeah. If you want, watch it. Yeah. But anyway, have a nice time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.